101 to land any successful project is to start with building an intelligent project plan, right? More than 15 years into my career in talent acquisition, I am still shocked by how many times I see companies not putting the same effort and thinking into creating a project plan for their hiring scale up as they would for any other type of project. We're going to talk about employer branding, sourcing and selecting candidates in some later videos, but here's my guide to the key things that you need to consider when you're building that project plan to deliver the ramp up. Number one, capability and capacity for your existing team members. Do your existing team members have the capability and capacity to take on board the new team members, especially if that means taking on or expanding line management responsibilities? Unless you want those valuable hires to just spin right back out the door and leave again, it's worth factoring this into your plan up front. Put support in place to de-risk if needs be, slow the place of hiring to let people have time to grow or bring in support to help on leadership coaching as examples. Number two, team capacity to actually support the hiring process. Think about the time needed by your team to support interviews. Factor an average of five candidates per role, 90 minutes of time per interview to include prepping for the interview, making your decision, giving feedback to candidates. Does your planned pace of delivery still then leave your team with enough time to do their equally important day jobs? Build in lead time in your plan to allow for candidate notice periods to start. Whether or not you do reference checking or other screening, factor that up front. That's going to add time, cost and resource to your process. And remember, proof the right to work is mandatory, so you must build that in. Capacity available to support the onboarding of your hires. Again, sounds obvious, but that needs to be planned in upfront. Number three, technical sourcing and selecting. The third part of your plan needs to be on how you're actually going to attract and select those amazing new hires. Good recruiters make it look easy, but trust me, it isn't. There's a reason why the recruitment sector has an annual turnover in the UK of 36 billion and growing. You need to think about whether you're going to deliver this in-house, in partnership with a vendor, or a blend of the two. The costs and benefits of each of those options is an entire other video in itself, but when you're creating your plan, it's important that you think about your budget, a good rule of thumb is to outline about 22% of the annual salaries of the roles that you want to hire to cover for attraction and resource. That's worst case scenario. It assumes that you plan to use the most expensive of options, which is agencies, but cost planning at this level is better safe than sorry. Technology. If you're doing this in-house, then what tools are you going to need? GDPR applies to candidate and employee data as well, so email and Excel spreadsheets are not a good plan. The bare minimum that you're going to need is an applicant tracking system or a CRM. And last but not least, how are you going to assess your candidates to your team of good skills in regards to interviewing? If not, factor in some help and time to upskill your team and remember to calibrate across your team on what good looks like for both skills and culture fit. Over the coming weeks, I'm going to be giving you more content on topics, including in-depth guides on tackling employer brand and assessing and selecting. But in the meantime, message us on the contact details below to sign up to our mailing list and be the first to get alerts of new content as it comes out. If you'd like a more in-depth chat about anything I've talked through today, feel free to get in touch and the Joint Talent Team will be happy to give you some additional support with your questions or challenges.